Hello Nidori Nars and Nidori Nars, it is King Nido here and today we are coming to you from Goldenrod City where the normal type aces are hosting the Pony Timbers and the Timbers have just gotten themselves up into a leader's 8 position. They're currently sitting in 12th and they are on a 3 game win streak but the normal types want to bring that to an end just by getting their third victory of the season. So let us know in the comments below who you think will win. Will it be the normal types or will it be the ground types? Let's go! Three. That is right, the ground types have won their last three games and they've moved themselves up into the leaders eight as they start out with Mudsdale and Crookedal. It will be Ursaluna and Toro starting out for the Golden Road Aces and immediately Ursaluna with that unnerve will make the Timbers too nervous to eat their berries. Toro is trying for a milk drink but it is too soon to be getting help from a mill tank as Crookedal does respond with the retaliate on to Ursaluna here. Not going to do as much damage as you might imagine, but Ursaluna will respond with the first impression. Good hit on Mudsdale, but will activate that stamina ability, so immediately Mudsdale does get the defense boost. Always good to start out with that defensively boosted Mudsdale, who responds with the pound and Tauros with the weather ball. There is no weather to capitalize on, but it does go for Crocodile. Gets an okay hit, but it does allow Crocodile to respond by setting by creating an uproar, continuing to go for Ursaluna. As Crocodile does cause that uproar, Ursaluna responds with the heart swap focusing in on Crocodile here, but it does seem like the ground types are concentrating on Ursaluna here. Clearly seeing it as a bigger threat with that 140 base attack. Mudsdale though, going for the tea time, so everyone's going to dig into their berries. That unnerved will not prevent this from happening. So everybody chowing down onto their left berries. Now the normal types actually have been very close to being on the bottom of the leaderboard. They're currently sitting in 18th place. So they are second last currently, and they've lost seven games so far this season. Next round, they do get a buy, so maybe they can get the victory here today. Crocodile continuing to make that uproar after everyone finishes their left berries, and we get the Feather Dance from Taurus onto Mudsdale here, lowering that attack stat a great deal. It has that 125 base attack as the uproar continues onto Taurus. Great hit there, but we get the Lava Plume in response. This hits everybody on the field, and this has left Mudsdale with the burn, this is actually going to cut into that attack stat, but it does yet again boost that defense with that stamina ability. And Mudsdale now with the Stone Axe, they're continuing to go for Ursaluna, but that was not very effective whatsoever. However, it does set up the pointed stones floating in the air on the side of the Aces, so any Pokemon that comes out now will be hit by those pointed stones as Crocodile still making that up with Mudsdale taking damage from the burn. And now we get the eruption from Tauros. This will hit both Crocodile and Mudsdale. Ursaluna doesn't have to worry about being hit, but Mudsdale again, another defense boost and Crocodile yet again, continuing the uproar. Tauros taking even more damage, able to hold on and a pluck in response by Ursaluna on to Mudsdale yet again, activating the stamina ability. I believe that's the fourth time already in this matchup as a side blade in response onto Ursaluna. Very, very little damage done there by Mudsdale, who does feel the effects of that burn, and Crocodile has finally calmed down from that uproar. Now Taurus going with the mist, so its side will become shrouded in mist. Look for it to not have any stats low. It is the power whip now on Ursulina is super effective from Crocodile, and it gets the elimination, the first one of the matchup, and Ursulina, Ursulina is finally taken out by the ground tops and Crocodile with that Moxie ability gets the attack boost. So now we have a defense boosted Mudsdale going with the drill pack onto Taurus who heavily tanks that hit. But remember Mudsdale div did have its attacks that lowered due to that burn. And out comes Oink alone for the Golden Rod Aces immediately having those pointed stones digging into it. Oink alone immediately though going with the Skitter Smack onto the attack boost to Crocodile and gets the super effective elimination. That is a fantastic elimination because you do not want that Crocodile with the boosted attack on the field. And now the assurance from Taurus onto Mudsdale. Tanks that hit, another defense boost yet again, but that burn is slowly chipping away, as are the Golden Road Aces at Mudsdale, who with the focus energy here is getting pumped. But that Mudsdale still feeling the effects of the burn, only has a number of turns in this matchup left. Surely an outcome to powder on for the Pony Timbers, and with that Sandstorm ability, it will kick up a Sandstorm. The normal types will be taking damage from this, but now a Gyro Ball from Taurus on to Mudsdale. Tanks yet another hit and yet another defense boost. That should be its last one for the matchup, but now Oinkolin with the Minimize is going to boost its evasiveness. It will not be able to avoid that Sandstorm, so it will take damage from that. Now her Powdon with the takedown, eliminating Taurus, putting the Pony Timbers back in front. And here is that sandstorm still raging over the field, but her powered on does get the recoil damage. And now we get the crush claw, but Oinkalone is able to avoid that attack. 
but is, as I said, unable to avoid that sandstorm. And Mudsdale receiving that burn for the last time, so it is eliminated. And we are back to a level playing field between these two sides with four Pokemon remaining each. And out comes a Ranguru for the Golden Road Aces. And it is Palisand coming out for the Pony Timbers. Now those Pointer Stones do dig into a Ranguru as Oinkalone going for the Heavy Slam onto Palisand. Palisand heavily tanks that Heavy Slam though. And Ranguru follows it up with the Confide onto Hepaton. So it's going to lower that special attack. Hepaton does respond however with the Ancient Power onto the Psychic Normal type. Now Palisand with the Dragon Claw onto Oinkalone gets a fantastic hit and Oinkalone is revealed to be a Zoroark in its illusion. It is a Hisuian Zoroark as well. So it has been out on this field for some time. Now it is going to go with the Facade. However, it goes for Palisand and it won't affect it because it is a part ghost type just like Zoroark. But the Fairy Wind will hit Hapaldon from Oranguru. Oranguru, however, is going to respond with the Crab Hammer. But Zoroark is able to get out of the way. Remember, it has that boosted evasiveness. Palisand with the Frost Breath going for Oranguru. See if I can get the freeze here. But it has got the critical hit onto Oranguru. Gets a good hit there. And there is that Sandstorm. Still doing more damage to the normal type of Pokemon on the field who are no longer protected by the mist. And now Zoroark with the bullet seed. This will be super effective on to her powder. There's a multi-hit move. It's got the first two. It surely needs to get all five to get rid of this huge physical Pokemon. It's got three. It's got four of the super effective move, but it will only get four. Unable to get the fifth. Oranguru, though, could come in and finish it off. Going with the super effective absorb, but her powder is able to hold on powder now going with the phantom force so it is going to vanish instantly from the field and now we got the roar from palace this will send a Ranguru back to the bench and out in its place comes weedy onto the field so we know all the remaining pokemon on the side of the golden rod aces as the normal types continue to take that damage from that sandstorm it's still raging over the field but the magma storm will not be avoided by palisand taking that damage from Zoroark. it's a really good hit as well and it becomes trapped in that swirling magma so it will be taking passive damage and we get the spirit shackle follow-up from weirdy this will be super effective capitalizing on the ghost type and it gets the elimination the golden road aces have just taken the lead here but that Phantom Force will be coming back onto the field, and it's not going to affect anybody. Weird Ear is ineffective by it because the normal types are immune to ghost type attacks, and that includes Zoroark as out comes Garchomp for the Pony Timbers, who I am sure would have loved to have been in that sandstorm. And it immediately gets hit with the Dragon Tail, super effective, and it is going to send it back to the bench. So now we're going to find out who the last Pokemon for the Pony Timbers is, and it is Don Fan for the second round in a row. And Don Fan being dragged out onto the field is Weird Ear with the Volt Switch, will not affect the normal type Pokemon. Uh, sorry, the ground type Pokemon, they have the immunity to electric type moves and the spikes are set up by a Powdon. So now the floating stones and the spikes are on the side of the Golden Road Aces as Zoroark goes with the Shell Smash. It is going to cut into its defense and special defense to boost its attack, special attack and speed. And it probably doesn't need its defense right now because it is so low health, it will be an easy elimination. It just needs to hang on for this turn to make sure it can get off a massive hit. But first, we do with the court change, moving those spikes and floating stones onto the side of the Pony Timbers. That is very intelligent because they know that Garchomp will be coming back out onto the field. And Donphan with the Confide, confiding in Weirdy, lowering its special attack. We saw this happen to her powder on earlier as her powder on now going with the Iron Tail onto Weirdy. Gets a great hit there as well as Zoroark responds with the Darkest Lariat onto Donphan. Gets a really good hit. Onto to Domfan and Weird Ear looking to follow it up. Sets up its own Sandstorm. This is a big, big mistake by the Golden Rod Aces. Because they're the ones that are going to receive the damage from it. And we get the Muddy Water from Donphan. This hits both normal type Pokemon. And eliminates Zoroark from this matchup. A powder on follows it up with the side Strike onto Weird Ear. And Weird Ear able to hold on from that not very effective move but it does take damage from the sandstorm that it set up and now out onto the field finally the real link alone appears in this matchup we get the curse from weird Ear. now it is going to lower its speed i do not think it needs its speed though but it does boost its attack however i think the sandstorm might eliminate it from this matchup as link alone for its first actual move of the matchup goes with the disable onto her powder her powder is going to have its moves 
disabled and it will start to struggle. But now we got the hold back from Dondrian, making sure that Weird Eel will not be able to outlast that Sandstorm. As Oink Clone also takes damage from it, but it is Weird Eel that will fall to the Sandstorm that it set up. And once again, the Pony Timbers have to put themselves back in front, thanks to Weird Eel, in fact. And out comes a Rangaroo back onto the field as Oink Clone with the Supersonic is going to leave Dondrian confused and will need to shake this off. Otherwise, it will do damage to itself. And the Pony Timbers do not need that right now. They want their fourth victory in a row as ever Rangaroo goes for the super effective Razor Shell and eliminates her Powdon with that move. It is now a level playing field. We're down to the last two Pokemon on both sides. But first, before Garchomp returns to the field, Donphan needs to shake off this confusion. And it is able to as it goes for the Shadow Punch, but it will not affect Oinkalona. Again, um, that immunity coming into play. And there is a Ranguru and Oinkalona taking the damage from the Sandstorm that Weird Ear set up. And out comes Garchomp. It's going to land it in those spikes and take damage from the pointed stones as well. But it is going to love being in this sandstorm with that sand veil ability. Boosting its evasiveness. It goes for the recycle. Unfortunately, that does fail. Oink alone able to take the chance to set up the psychic terrain, which I think Oranguru will appreciate being part psychic type. See if it actually capitalizes on it here as the battlefield does get weird. And Oranguru. Also going for the Tailwind, so it's going to boost the speed of the two normal type Pokemon as that wind blows from behind him. Donphan is still confused, and it is unable to shake it off. It does do damage to itself, unfortunately. Always terrible to see an Oink alone, and Oranguru is still taking damage from that Sandstorm. But that Psychic Train is still in play as Oink alone with the Stomping Tantrum. Now going for the pseudo-legendary Garchomp, taking a good hit there. And Rangaroo follows it up with the Iron Tail. But Donphan is able to roll out of the way as we get our first time one in the matchup. And we also get the Flash Cannon from Garchomp onto a Rangaroo. Good hit there. Donphan snapped out of its confusion, looking to follow it up. It does go with the Mystical Power. Going for Oink alone here now. We just had our first time warning. If we go into overtime, any remaining Pokemon in this matchup will be restored to full strength as that Sandstorm just subsided. And the Dire Claw onto Garchomp, not very effective. They're chipping away the pseudo legendary here, but it's also put Garchomp to sleep. But as I said, if we go into overtime, any remaining Pokemon will be restored to full health and it will become a singles battle. We get that Ember now onto Garchomp, also not very effective. They're really trying to get Garchomp out of this matchup in case they do go into overtime because they do not want the pseudo legendary there. As we get another time warning and the mud slap onto Oinkalone from Donphan. This is going to lower Oinkalone's accuracy here. Oinkalone is going to respond with the Lunar Blessing. So it's going to restore its own health. It's also going to restore the health of its teammate Oranguru here. So this is really good play right here early. Late on in the matchup. And Oranguru with the mean look onto Donphan. This will lower its speed, but it may be unnecessary. Sorry, it's going to make it so it can no longer escape, which is unnecessary because none of the Pokemon here are running away, and I hope you aren't either. As Donphan with the Night Slash onto a Rangaroo, super effective, and it gets the elimination. This puts the Pony Timbers back in front as we're edging closer to the end of regulation time. Garchomp is still asleep, and that Tailwind has petered out. Garchomp's finally woken up as we have the countdown timer on the field, and it goes for the Fire Punch onto Oinkalone. Good hit there. Oinkalone is going to respond with the Poison Powder onto Garchomp. This is fantastic. This will do that passive damage. This could potentially eliminate it if we go into overtime. But before that happens is the crucial part. Donphan with the Smog now onto Oinkalone. Okay, hit. There's Garchomp taking the damage. And it is eliminated. We should be able to get one more turn in this matchup. But we're down to Donphan versus Oinkalone. This is fantastic. The weirdness has disappeared. That Psychic Terrain has ended. Oinkalone. Going with the fire spin onto Donphan, not going to do much damage, even though it becomes trapped in that fiery vortex. I don't think that'll be enough. Donphan with the Draco Meteor, and Oink alone holds on. We are going into overtime between these two Pokemon. They are both going to be restored back to full strength. Their stat changes will be reset, and we go into overtime. One on one, it is. Is Dawn fan for the Pony Timbers? It is Oinkalone for the Golden Rod Aces. And here we go. Oinkalone has the speed advantage. It goes immediately for the last respects. Gets a terrible hit there on the Dawn fan. Dawn fan is able to respond with the cross chop. Super effective. A fantastic hit on the Oinkalone. Oinkalone responds with the mean look. Now we already saw this. Happen. So Donphan can no longer escape, but it's not going out anywhere because Donphan is going to go with the cow tower cleave and it gets the elimination. The Pony Timbers have won. They have gotten their fourth victory in a row. 
That was fantastic, very quick overtime play there. Don Fan coming in strong at the end of a battle yet again for the Pony Timbers. And this will move them up in the ninth place as next round. They have to take on the first place, Heart Home Spectres. But the Aces stay in 18th, and next round they will be taking on the Pastoria Cascade. But until then, Nidorinos and Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, share, subscribe. But more importantly, always remember, you are awesome. And I'll see you when you see me.